everyone, it's Raheel. Hurricane season officially starts today, and while we have a lot of info on what to do during major storms and evacuations for us, the humans, we often forget about prepping for our fur babies. So today for our team chat, I'm bringing in our lifestyle contributor, Olivia Flores Alvarez, and producer Carleon Jones to get you prepped on how to take care of your pet during hurricane season and, God forbid, an evacuation. It's Thursday, June 1st. I'm Raheel Ramsnali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Olivia, welcome back to CityCast Houston. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's good to be back with you guys. I know. We're so excited to chat with you about hurricane season and our pets. And Carly is also joining us. What's up, Carly? Hey, y'all. Well, let's get things started. First things first. How many pets do you have and their names, please? I have two cats and they are Coco and Mimi. And Mimi is, yes, from La Boheme. Uh, (laughs) You can tell I'm an arts writer. Yes, I name my cats after characters. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And they're just uh, normal little household cats. Mimi is allergic to fleas. Okay. Which makes my life really interesting in Houston in the summertime. Uh, She breaks out in hives and does all kind of weird things. So we have to keep fleas down to an absolute minimum. And it was part of that that started me thinking about what am I going to do when we get into hurricane season? And I need all this special stuff for this cat that's allergic to fleas. Yeah, you got to start prepping right now. So that's good. Carly, uh, how about you? My dog, we have one. Don't laugh at my dog's name. Its name (laughs) is Fat Daddy. It came from our dog, Fluffy, which was his mom. So, you know, we just, we look at dogs and we just name them based off of what they look like. The last dog was really fluffy. This dog was fat. And my brother was like, six when he named him. So <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. I love that. So we've got cats representative. We've got dogs. Mm-hmm. I also own a dog. Uh, his name is Bane named after the character in Batman. Mm-hmm. So he is a little Cocker Spaniel poodle and he is the sweetest little dog. And he's <laughs> actually been evacuated in a hurricane and during Hurricane Harvey. So that's why I was so excited to chat about this. So first things first, let's get started with What can we do, Olivia, to calm our pets during a major storm or even just a normal storm that pops up in the city of Houston? Because they can be so powerful, these summer rain showers. They can. They really can. And if you've ever lived through a hurricane, I have. And I've lived through the hurricane eye going right (sighs) over my house. Mm. That is the loudest sound I have ever heard. And it scared me. It scared my pets. It sounds like a freight train bearing down on you. And it's extremely loud. It will absolutely scare your pets. So the first thing to keep your pets calm is you be calm. Mm. They take their cues from us. So if we are frantic and scattered and running all around hyper and crazy, guess what? They will be hyper and crazy right along with us. The second thing is that cats and dogs really rely on smell. And so if you've just washed their bedding in some super concentrated, high-powered bleach, and it smells nothing like them or you, they're going to think, this is not mine. Mm. You know, and so where's my bed? I don't smell my bed. Other thing is that you can get some ear covers for them, those kind of muffs that they use at the grooming center. Go ahead and put them on them before the storm, just so they can kind of get used to them if your dog isn't used to going to the groomer. And that'll help the sound. I would also really suggest keeping your pets in the same room with you during the height of the storm, when the storm is really going crazy outside, for two reasons. One, they need to know where you are. Mm -hmm. And two... You don't want to have to go around looking for them when it's time to evacuate. You want to know exactly where they are and where you can put your hands on them, get them in their crates and get them out the door. It's not the time to go around looking for fat daddy or fluffy around the garage (laughs) to see if you can find them when they've hidden, you know, under the freezer or something where you can't get to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really good tips. How about you, Carly? Those are all great. Everything Olivia said was perfect. Only thing that I would add to it is that 
pets are just kind of like babies also. So toys and treats always ease stress too. So make sure you have their favorite treats, their favorite toys to kind of distract them through all the things that are going on outside. It'll kind of just ease their stress level to where they're not like freaking out the whole time. Yeah, for dogs, what I like to do during a big storm is we have a, a doggy shirt for Bane. So it's really just an old shirt of mine or my wife's and we put it on him just for comfort. And then we've also used a lavender spray to help calm him. But make sure you try those before a storm and see if your pet likes them. If there's any kind of reactions that they might get, whether it be allergic or they just don't like them. For our dog specifically, that lavender calming spray has done miracles, not only during storms, but also if we're out of the house and we just need him to calm down, it works great. So I can't recommend that enough. Mm, that's a great idea. I even use a lavender spray at night sometimes. So I, I know it works really right. well. <laughs> <laughs> but you're absolutely right. You need to try everything beforehand. If you're going to cover their ears, try it beforehand. If you're going to use a spray, try okay. it beforehand. Um, you were talking about a shirt for the dog. If you are packing up their crate, it's a good idea to throw in a shirt that smells like you. So wear a shirt to sleep a couple of nights a t-shirt and then throw that t-shirt in their crate. When you're ready to pack the dog or cat up, they've got something that smells like you. And that's really, really calming yeah. for them. Smells like you, not stinks like you. Do not throw the, the <laughs> t-shirt that you used after the, the hard day at the gym. No, 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 no. Just a no. smell, something that you slept in normally, okay? Mm -hmm. Olivia, let's move to outdoor pets because we're talking about indoor pets right now. For people that have outdoor pets that typically stay outdoors, what are some tips for them to keep their animals feeling safe and sheltered? One thing is that I would absolutely have a way to call them and make sure that they answer you during a storm or during, you know, even just in a pre-storm, animals can sense that, hey, something's coming, the weather's changing, things are kind of funky. So they might start to hide a little early. I would have a way to call them and have them always come, always respond 100% of the time. For me, my cats respond to me opening up a can of tuna. Mm. Anytime I open a can of tuna, they can be outside, around the corner, in the back room, under covers, snoring. I open a can of tuna and they are in the kitchen. They are there at the door. If you have something like that that works 100% of the time, make sure that you're aware of it, that you've got it on hand to call them. Um, the other thing is if you need to bring them into a garage, that's always a, a good option. If you've got outside pets, you may not want to bring, you know, the dog that lives outside into your pristine bedroom, but a garage is always pretty safe for them. And do that, you know, when you get notified that the storm is coming, when you see it starting to rain, go ahead and grab them then. Carly on, I know you have, you've had to deal with this with an outdoor dog. What are some tips that you have? Yeah, so our dog stays outside. We have a really big cage outside that we actually built. You could probably fit at least two or three dogs in it because we've just we've always had dogs in our family. Um, but what we do, we go to the store and stuff the inside of the cage with hay because it keeps them warm. So we'll do hay, we'll do old blankets because we want to make sure they're as comfortable as possible. Uh, we'll go around the entire cage. And like I said, it's a huge cage and we will put up sheets everywhere to try to block the wind. We'll put it on the outside. We'll put it in the inside also because my mom, like I said, she looks at our dogs like babies. So she wants to make sure mm -hmm. they're just as comfortable as possible. And it's worked pretty well. We also put a jacket on top of our dog and just whatever we can do to keep the inside insulated as best as we can. All right. If you have to bring them inside during a storm, Olivia, you mentioned the garage is a great place. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But you also have a tip, right, Carly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't typically bring our dog inside, but if we were to bring it inside, we would get those fences that you use for babies, you know, um, like to kind of yes. keep them out of stuff. So we would put it in a room that we don't use as much, like one of the areas that isn't like how Olivia said, the pristine bedroom that you don't want to get mm -hmm. dirty. So get a fence put all the covers and sheets in there that you would have used for outside. You can put them in there just to keep them as comfortable as possible. Put their treats in there. Like, you know, make the room really a comfortable experience for them as possible because they're not used to being inside. They're not used to all the people walking around and, you know, everything going on. 
Olivia, we know storm prep in Houston works like this. We usually find out about a storm about five days before. Everyone goes crazy. We go to the grocery store. We wipe out H-E-B. And then we come home and just wait the storm, right? Right. What are some tips in terms of prepping for a storm that we often forget when it comes to pets, when it comes to supplies? One thing I would say is there's actually a prep situation before you even get the notification. Before Weather Channel says, hey, there's a storm coming, Houston, there are some things you can do right now today. And those are the things that are really kind of crucial. Have your pet chipped. This is the biggest factor when you get a lost pet is whether or not they have a chip. That may determine whether or not you get them back. And unfortunately, during hurricanes, especially if you've got outdoor dogs or if you're trying to evacuate, you may, in fact, lose your pet. So have your pet chip keep that chip information updated. Make sure that it's the latest contact. You don't want your cell phone from three times ago to be the contact. You won't be able to get you. Update your vaccines. And there are two reasons for that. One is that being vaccinated helps protect your dog if she's lost or if she's injured during an evacuation. And proof of those vaccines are going to be really important if you end up at a shelter or if you end up at a hotel. You may be denied shelter or a hotel if you don't have those documents. And you wanna get those both in hard copy, inside a plastic sleeve, with your hurricane kit, and on your photos. This is something that I'm really excited about, and that is there are online Zoom vets available now, the same way that you and I go to a telehealth appointment, we can get a telehealth vet. But you need to find that information now before you need it. There is gonna be a fee, Absolutely. But it's a modest fee usually. And they can tell you, hey, you know, this is normal for the dog in that situation or this is an absolute emergency. You need to get them to an emergency center or this is what you can do at home. The other thing I would suggest is join right now a neighborhood pet group on social media. They're great. They're very active. They show pictures all the time of dogs they've seen running around the neighborhood that might be lost dogs that they found. If you get separated from your pet, this would be the first you know, group that I would go to because they're the closest to you. Mm-hmm. And um, I would also right now take clear color photos of your pet's face and the whole body. A lot of people, when they put up lost folders, they have this great picture of a dog in a bunny costume from last Halloween. <laughs> that's not going to help me to yeah. identify, right, the dog that I'm seeing walking down the street now. So you get a real close, clear, you know, head on mug shot and then a shot of their left side of their body and a shot of their right side of the body. Last thing that you can do before you even get the warning, learn the Heimlich remover and CPR for your cat now. If you have a dog, a big, big dog that's outside, it may take two of you to do that Heimlich maneuver But there is a way to to learn a Heimlich maneuver and CPR for your pet now. Really good tips. I know when we had to evacuate during Hurricane Harvey, our dog, he's about 30 pounds, right? So I can just Mm -hmm. pick him up and we had to evacuate on a boat. So some tips from that I learned. The best thing you can do, of course, you got to have your food ready right for your dog Mm -hmm. because we knew we'd be out for a few days. But get an airtight container, you know, ones that won't get water in because you will be in water. There's going to be a lot of water around. There's going to be rain. So Mm -hmm. get an airtight container, have all your medicine pre-packed, ready to go. And then, of course, the toys and anything that will comfort them during that move, right? There's a lot that's happening. It's a scary thing. You know, it's crazy. In fact, when we evacuated, we were on the Chronicle front page. Like, (laughs) I'm holding my dog and there he is as we're getting off of a boat. So, you know, you could just see the fear in his eyes because it is scary. There's Mm -hmm. noises. You're panicked, right? So Mm -hmm. just try to calm them as much as possible during that move. Carleon, how about you? Any tips? Yeah, my tips for evacuation would be first to have a list of places that are pet friendly because a lot of areas aren't pet friendly. So think of hotels like the Red Roof Inn. Um, There's some holiday inns that are pet friendly. There's some double trees as well. Um, So just get a list together of shelters and hotels that will accept your pet. Also, have an emergency kit, like a pet-friendly emergency kit. If you don't feel like packing one, they have one on Chewy.com that is pre-made first aid kits for pets. 
You could also, if you pack one yourself, of course, bring your medicine, bring weeks worth of food, of water, uh, all the basic stuff that you would normally need, but also some poop bags and paper Mm -hmm. towels for cleanup. Because if you're in your car, for instance, and let's just say they hear another noise and get scared and just, you know, poop their selves in the car. You want to be able to clean things up wherever you go. Those are really good tips. Hey, CityCast Houston. It's Michael Ziviak. While CityCast Houston works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background making sure that our listeners are connecting with the best that Houston has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Houston what it is. The business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Houstonians who put together those food festivals you enjoy, the concerts you attend, the exhibits you can't miss, and who make those candles your mom can't stop talking about. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Houston podcast and on our sister daily newsletter, Hey Houston. Shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm and let's connect. This episode is brought to you by Caesar Gourmet Food for Dogs. Your dog deserves the best, so give them what they've always wanted, real food for dogs. Caesar Wholesome Bowls are made with real chicken or beef as the first ingredient, and fresh vegetables. Crafted with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives, Caesar Wholesome Bowls are great as a full meal, topper, or snack for your best friend. Pick up Caesar Wholesome Bowls in the wet dog food aisle at any major retailer near you. Caesar, love them back. Olivia, any final tips here for our listeners? Absolutely. I have a couple of things for them. One, what Carleon just mentioned, you know, if you are transporting your pets in a car, they may lose their bowels in the car. I have diapers, some disposable diapers. Mm. I've tried them on my cats. They understand, hmm, this is a temporary situation. I can deal with this. And so if I'm transporting them in a car and it's a long ride, or I'm afraid that they might get scared, I have some diapers for them. Diapers are a lot easier to clean than a whole back seat. Yes. <laughs> Never, ever, under any circumstances, let your cat loose in a car. It may seem like you're being mean to them, especially since most dogs can sit in a car and be controlled. Cats will not. You know, at the oddest moment, they will zoom underneath the brake pedal, and there you are not being able to stop. So never, ever let a cat loose inside a car. Always keep it inside a crate. If you have to, go ahead and cover the crate with a towel. That helps to calm them down a little bit. And there are Mm -hmm. a couple of more things that I would add to the emergency kit. Keep your dog or cat on a harness, not a collar, and take an extra leash. It just makes a lot more sense to be able to control a dog or a cat with a harness than a collar. And mark the harness with contact information, hang an ID, Take a soft muzzle for your dog, a soft muzzle, something that's not going to really restrict them, but is going to help to keep them calm. A hotel will appreciate it, seeing the muzzle on your dog, and shelters might absolutely require it. You mentioned that you were evacuated on a boat. I would put booties on my dog, those Mm -hmm. walking booties, to make sure that if they're walking through standing water, they're not walking through something that might be infected or poisonous, or they're not walking over broken debris. Also, when it comes to first aid kits, like Carleon said, you know, you can go online and just buy a first aid kit or look at the first aid kit and see what's in it. You know, they give you a pretty extensive list. But I would add some things. I added an animal first aid kit uh, book so that I can see, okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? I added some medicated ear wipes, some unscented baby wipes, my monthly flea meds, again, my cat has a real issue with fleas, a flea comb, and some really thick work gloves. If my cat or dog gets frightened, I don't want to get scratched trying to help them. So I've got some thick work gloves. The last thing I would say is that be careful about human over-the-counter medications. There are lots of places online, on YouTube, you'll see different vets or vet aides saying, yes, you can give your dog aspirins. Yes, you can give them Benadryl. I will not give my pets any human medications at all unless my vet, who knows my pet, says, yes, it's okay to give Coco this or that. In Mm -hmm. general, there's no human medication that's safe for all pets in all situations. 
again, you can go back to that calling an emergency vet and getting a telehealth. If it's okay for your vet to say, you know, yes, you can give fat daddy an aspirin every once in a while, write Mm -hmm. down the dosage and the brand that the vet suggests and keep that with the medicine. I promise you, in the middle of an emergency, you are not going to remember, did he say a baby aspirin? Did he say two Excedrin? What was it? Okay, so keep the dosage written down and with the medication. There's one more thing that I would suggest, especially for dogs that and cats that are being evacuated, life jackets. They're not too expensive. They are, you know, you have you do have to buy a special one, but they aren't too expensive. And yeah, dogs and cats can swim, but they get tired. And if they yeah. get separated from you, they might have to swim for a really long time. So if you know that you're in an area that easily floods, which is, oh yeah, by the way, all of Houston, <laughs> yes. you may want to think about getting life jackets for them. Mm-hmm. All right, Carly on any final tips? The last tip that I would think of is um, when Olivia was mentioning medicine, um, when we give our dog medicine, we always put it in the dog's food because if not, he's not going to take it. He just, mm-hmm. he's like, no. So we always like either wrap it in some meat that he's about to eat or try to kind of break it up to make it not taste as bad. So just have those treats, have the meats that they might enjoy mm-hmm. ready as well. If you do have to evacuate. Again, I think the biggest thing is prep ahead of time. Don't get caught in an emergency moment. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we don't have to use any of these tips during hurricane season 2023, but be prepared. Start now. Get your dog used to those moments, that tension that comes with an evacuation. Get everything prepped right now. Can't recommend that enough. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us. That was really informative. Carleon, thank you for the tips. Mm -hmm. It was great being with you guys. Thank you so much. That was Olivia Flores Alvarez and Carleon Jones. You can read Olivia's work on the Houston Press and Outsmart Magazine. Before we go, tonight is game one of the NBA Finals, and I know our Houston Rockets aren't in it and probably won't be for a while, but I'm pumped for tonight. When I moved to Houston from Karachi, one of the things that helped me assimilate was basketball and watching the NBA. Every year, no matter the teams, I always tune in for the NBA Finals to remember that childhood rush of seeing the two best teams in the best league compete for a chance to win it all. And this year is especially awesome because one of my favorite players, Jimmy Butler, who grew up in Tomball, has another chance to win a ring and cap off an incredible playoff run that has seen his Miami Heat make it to the NBA Finals as an eight seed. The Heat and the Denver Nuggets tip off tonight, and I hope you tune in as well. Hey, by the way, don't forget to do our new listener survey. CityCast Houston wants to improve the podcast and better serve you, the listener. So please take our survey at citycast.fm slash survey. It's only going to take five minutes. And once you complete it, you'll be entered to win a $250 Visa gift card. That's citycast.fm slash survey. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening. And I hope you learned something new. And sorry, that's going to... No worries. We can pause there. It's not a big deal. Oh, okay.